Hello everyone, and welcome to our class video about parallel and perpendicular lines. Our learning goal is that you will be able to determine the slope of a line that is parallel or perpendicular to a line given to you. In our last video, we reviewed how to calculate slope, either from a graph, or from two points, or from an equation. Okay, this is the review of what you would learned in Algebra 1. So, this was to prepare you for our discussion about parallel and perpendicular lines. So, having reviewed that, let's get on to our main topic, which is about parallel lines and perpendicular lines. We'll start with parallel lines. You can see that lines A and B in the graph are parallel. Okay? These parallel lines are lines in the same plane which never touch or intersect. Same, oops, typo. Same plane that don't intersect. Symbolically, we can write this as A is parallel to B. These two vertical lines, which are parallel, indicate that those two lines, A and B, are parallel, and we would read it as A is parallel to B. Okay, let's look at the slopes of these two lines. You, go, going graphically, counting rise over run, I can determine for line A that we have a rise of 3 and a run of 2, making the slope of A 3 over 2. I can also count on B that I have a rise of 3 and a run of 2. This gives me, again, a slope of 3 over 2. So what do you notice? Well, pretty easily you can determine that parallel lines have the same slope. Okay, now let's look at perpendicular lines. Have you guys heard the word perpendicular before? I bet you have. You may or may not remember what it means. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to make 90 degree angles. You can tell from the picture here that those two lines intersect to make a 90 degree angle. In fact, four of them if you count all four corners. Okay, so symbolically, you re we represent this as, oops, line C is perpendicular to line D. This symbol right here indicates that they are perpendicular. Let's see what we can observe about the slopes of perpendicular lines. Again, going graphically, I can determine that the slope of line C with a rise of 2 and a run of 3 is 2 over 3. How about for line D? Well, again choosing some convenient points. Let's use this one right here. Oops. Alright, so we're going down 3 and over 2. So that's a rise of negative 3 and a run of 2. This would give me a slope of negative 3 over 2. So, how are these slopes related? Well, it turns out that you see that they have opposite signs. This, the slope of line C is positive, whereas the slope of line D is negative. And the numerator became the denominator, and the denominator became the numerator. We call this having opposite reciprocal slopes. The word opposite here indicates that we have inverted signs. In other words, positive became negative or negative becomes positive. Okay. So, one slope out of 
two perpendicular lines will be negative, the other will be positive. The word reciprocal here is used to describe the flip of the fraction. In other words, this is, for ex uh, let me give you this example. So one half, a slope of one half, a reciprocal of that would be two over one. I just flipped the fraction. Now, keep in mind we would also have to do the opposite. So if a line had a slope of one half, its perpendicular slope would be negative two over one. Okay, now let's look at one final example. Find the slope of any line perpendicular to the line with the equation 2x plus 7y equals 10. Hmm. Well, if I knew the slope of this line, I could easily determine what the perpendicular slope is. But, hmm, that line is not in a form that is readily helpful for determining the slope. I would rather have this line converted into y equals mx plus b. Hmm. Well, how could I get it into that form? Well, we can just manipulate the equation. Okay, so I need to get y by itself. Therefore, I need to move everything else over to the other side of the equation. Let me move the 2x over to the other side by subtracting it. That would cancel it here, and I would just have to subtract it on the other side. Notice that I did not put the 2x underneath the 10. This is because they are not like terms. I can't add them together. So, the next line of my equation would be 7y equals 10 minus 2x. Okay, then finally, to solve for y, I would need to divide both sides of the equation by 7. The coefficient in front of y. This would make the 7's cancel here and we would, be, ha we would le be left with 10 over 7 minus 2 over 7x. Okay, which I could also rewrite as putting the x term first, negative 2 over 7x plus 10 over 7. So it looks like y equals mx plus b. Okay, so what is the slope of this line? We find the slope as the coefficient of x so, the slope of that line is negative 2 over 7. To find the slope of the perpendicular line, I would need to do the opposite reciprocal. Therefore, my slope of negative 2 over 7 would change to become positive 7 over 2. This would be the that slope, any line with that slope, would be perpendicular to the line 2x plus 7y equals 10.